examples of two dogs who are very relaxed around their children. If you look at their eyes and their mouths, you have a very relaxed um, definition on their face. While primates talk, <laughs> canines show their communication with body language, um, um, facial expressions, shifting of movements, movement of head, uh, their tail, and they express their emotions that way. So when dogs are talking to you, they really are talking to you. They're just doing it with their body as opposed to with their words. Primates like to hug and hug and hug. It's just hardwired in us. We like touching and feeling and hugging. Um, dogs don't like to hug. <laughs> it is a very impolite behavior, uh, a canine behavior. In fact, actually, it's a challenge. And of course, what do dogs, what do kids often do when they see a dog? And then they <laughs> yes. hug it. And then they walk up and hug it. And if you notice on this dog's face, this is actually a very good example of the messages that the dog is trying to give. He's looking straight at the camera of whoever's taking him. He's got a whale eye, you'll notice, mm -hmm. uh, and he has a closed mouth. He's basically almost stopped breathing. <laughs> it's like, please, <laughs> do something. This is very uncomfortable for me. But he's tolerating that. Um, do you realize that if this was another dog, this would be, oh my god, we're going to have a fight. But it's not. And the fact that this dog is even, do, even tolerating it and giving those signals is kind of a miracle. I think the things that we need to remember is that dogs have very distinct spatial area issues. Um, these two dogs are coming up on one another. They're not looking at one another. But you can tell they're not exactly happy. If they should turn their face very close to close, something else would be happening. And these two dogs are actually friends. So uh, if you get right up in somebody, if you get right up in a, a, a dog's face, they feel very uncomfortable. But now let's think about it. We do the same thing. If somebody's moving into your space, we start to get also very uncomfortable. And of course, what do children do? And this dog is, again, being very tolerant. Uh, but Again, showing all the signals of, wait, <laughs> closed mouth, whale eyes. I particularly like this um, presentation because, as you can see, the dog is clearly turning around and looking at the camera and saying, I don't want to do this, and you're pushing me into this. How do dogs meet? Proper meeting behavior with a dog is they first go around in the corner. If you're watching the dog park, they'll go in a circle, 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 and they meet not face to face, but nose to butt. <laughs> and this would be, I don't like you, I'm going to tear into you. And this person who is now holding the dog is pushing the dog into the baby, who's a little tenuous at that point, giving all the signals saying, please don't let me do this, but is still tolerating. And in this case, we always think babies are fragile. Well, that dog doesn't necessarily know that. <laughs> to him, he sees somebody who's taller looming over him and carrying something in his hand. Oh my goodness, hi. Hi. Come on in. Come on in. Thank you. So as you can see, we have a worried expression. And he's kind of slinking away. In this particular case, very tolerant, but, oh, please don't hurt me. This is the other thing that humans, for some reason, love doing to dogs, <laughs> which is, of course you like to, have, to be in a costume. This dog not only has a look of, oh my god, I cannot believe you've done this to me. It's like, you're putting this thing on my back. You're trying to trap me. You're trying to encounter me. So again, you see the whale eye. You see the worried expression on their face. Not a happy camper. So let's talk about how we can really interact with dogs positively and how we can teach children to interact positively with dogs that we can teach um, children to do is how to meet, meet dogs. 
And this is one of the things that we're going to do in our um, workshop, especially the one that we have with children. And we do have the, the one that's right after her, this, which will be completely done with just children, is to teach them how to meet the dog. First, ask the owner, is it okay? And if you are a dog owner, be aware of how your dog feels about children. You can make your dog much more comfortable around children if you're standing there with relax, relax put them in a sit or down, have treats available. And watch for those signs of stress. If you have signs of stress, you might say, you know, I'd love for you to see them, but I'm going to give you a treat. Let's go ahead and throw it on the floor next to the dog rather than giving them with your hand. Just throw it or just talk to them from a distance. So be aware, have treats available and ready so it's a positive experience, and also don't be afraid to say, I don't think so, not today. Because if you're in a big mall or a street fair, not a good place if your dog's not very familiar with children to meet there. So first, the child asks the owner, and just because the owner said yes, doesn't mean the dog has said yes. It may be a bad day for the dog. Or the owner might not be able to read that dog very well to know whether that dog is in fact um, comfortable meeting this child. So one of the things that you might want to do, and I have a handout here that you can put on your refrigerator that shows the um, signs of stress in the dog that you might want to put up for the child to see. So that if you're taking a walk with your child, they can, you might want to talk about, what was that dog doing as we're taking a walk? Was it happy? Was it not happy? Put it on the refrigerator and have a conversation piece for when you all go out for a walk and are observing dogs. So if the dog is turning their head away, the child goes up, they should be distinctly taught if the, if the if the dog turns his head away, if the dog ends up hiding behind the owner and the owner is grabbing it out and pushing it forward, the child should say, no thank you, not today. And teach them to, to do that. Because they're now learning something about another creature's communication. If the dog noses or approaches the child, that would be a good time to pet the dog. But also petting the dog is a, a, another thing to think about. We often walk up, this is how, these, this is how dogs are usually greeted in, in, in the public. Oh, aren't you sweet? I just love you. Isn't that nice? Patting on the head. Yes, <laughs> patting on the head. And we're looming over them. Mm -hmm. Now, if you were at a party and this was happening to you by a human, you'd go, oh my God, get me away from this very dark person. <laughs> But we don't think about that with dogs. So really, the best way to do it is to either kneel down, extend your hand, let them smell, and pet on the side. Try not to loom over the dog. All right. Well, Softer, it, 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 basically what they're asking, it, the better thing to do, rather than putting the hand on the head, mm -hmm. is put, bring the hand up under the chin yeah. and go like that. Um, that's less of a, I'm going to grab you. Because what they see is this hand reaching over their head to touch them, around the eyes of the ears. If, if you're coming up under the side of the cheek or on the neck, uh, much less, much less. Um, the other thing that you also might want to try is, rather even an open hand, is the back. Oh, good. Mm -hmm. With dogs that are, are very nervous, I'll go like this. It's okay. How are you doing? Now there's not that, you know, claw that's starting to now suddenly go towards their head. Okay, does that help? Dogs are talking to us all the time. I think there are some key points to look for that say what are stress signals. What do we do when we're worried or upset or mad? We frown. So do dogs. <laughs> they do the exact same thing. A mouth is closed. You almost see dogs stop breathing when they are very, very worried. 
If there's no food around and they, you suddenly do this, you saw Teddy do that just a little bit with you, which was, it's almost like, I mean, no harm. You'll see dogs do this all the time with other dogs. It's a calming gesture. I mean, no harm. I mean, no harm. If a dog is yawning, they could be anxious. They could also be tired. Yawning is all, you have to look for some other clues besides just yawning. But, but look at, at yawning. If they're doing it repeatedly, they're doing it often, they're doing it with a whale eye, as in the case of this dog, let them alone. That's stress, they're relieving stress. Half moon eyes are a very good indicator that a dog is very nervous. Half moon eyes is that you'll see the whites in their eyes, literally. This is a very good case where the dog on the left um, wants to meet someone. Look at the mouth, look at the eyes, look at the overall body. Very relaxed, laid back. If a dog has an open mouth, but the, but the, but the um, eyes are very stressed, in other words, the skin looks like it's kind of pulled back and they're going like this, <laughs> stressed. In the dog on the right, same dog. This is what I like about this picture. Your exact same dog, but in one case he's very not very relaxed. In the other case, he's I'm not so sure. Tail is up. Just because a dog's tail is wagging doesn't mean he's happy. I stood um, somewhere and there was a dog that was growling, but the tail was wagging, <laughs> and the people were discussing. Well, he's probably not upset. His tail is wagging. He was growling. <clears throat> and the mouth is closed in this particular case. You also will notice the eyes. The eyes are now no longer relaxed, laid back. The muscles around the eyes are, are not as relaxed as they were in the other picture. So an easy way to look at dog signals is there's enjoyment. That's great. Everything's cool. There's tolerance. I'm not quite sure this is going on, but they're tolerating it. And the other one is just stop. <laughs> stop already. I've had enough. So here are some examples of this. So what would you say this is? Is the dog, is this an enjoyment caution or stop? So enjoyment? You're right. It's enjoyment. Relaxed mouth. The biggest thing is that whole relaxed expression on their face. If you ever notice, dogs really show their happiness very similar to how we show their, their, their our happiness. We they smile. That's the equivalent of a dog's smile. So what would this be? <laughs> Beam me up, Scotty. <laughs> Beam me up, Scotty. I love these children, but please let them bring them away from me. And this is probably a family picture. This would be, I'm tolerating this, but I'm not going to be able to do this for long. Okay, what's that? This is easy. Stop immediately. Again, don't correct a growl. Don't correct showing of teeth. Just move your dog away. If they're growling or looking stressed, give them something to do, move them away. So yes, no, that would be a, I got it. I love this particular one, and it's in your, um, in, in the thing that I, that I handed out to you all. Uh, two things are happening here. The father is taking the child's hand and bringing it down to touch the dog. Oh my goodness. And the dog is saying, oh please no, I don't want to do this. Clear signals by both the baby and the dog. By both the baby and the dog. And the adult is completely ignoring both of them. Again, never correct a growl. So let's talk a little about puppy socialization and training. Things, if you have a dog, how to get them ready for, um, for children, so that they're okay with children. Um, uh, a couple of things to, however, think about in that, in that perspective. You're never going to have a child-proof dog. 
My dog has been in the hospital, he's seen fire engines, he's met firemen, he's been conditioned to sounds and gotten lots of treats, but I will tell you I will not leave him unattended with a child. You just don't. Because that's how accidents occur. And that's what you should tell your children. If an adult is not around, don't pet the dog. So socialize your puppy and socialize your puppy early. You should start training after their first parvo shot. I don't care what the vet says. After their first parvo shot. So that they can see a lot of different people, a lot of different children, a lot of different races of people, African American, Asian, uh, we have a wonderful setup where we periodically have mentally challenged individuals here and when they come I ask the puppies to come out and meet them. They're given lots and lots of treats. The individuals are given treats to throw on the ground and the thing that's wonderful is there's a building relationship between the differently handicapped individuals and the dog because what happens with those individuals? Dogs bark at them all the time so guess what? They're terrified of dogs because dogs never see individuals like that. So if you see that, carry around a packet of treats in your hand so that they can be introduced to a lot of different individuals who speak differently in some fashion. Start obedience program right away. The first thing you should do is not let your dog jump up. What happens when puppies jump up? We think it's cute. Yes, oh, aren't you cute? Isn't it wonderful? And now you don't want them to jump up. Stop it. Stop it. Do you think the dog knows what you're saying? No. They think, oh, she likes it. I'm going to jump it higher. Stop. <laughs> now we are yelling it louder. Stop. Now they're jumping louder. Oh, yes, okay, I'll jump higher. However, if you turn away, fold your arms, turn away, you are suddenly very boring. So, but that's one of the things that you want to learn in a, in a pet obedience class. Because jumping is where even bites can occur with children by accident. The other thing is handling, is practice handling exercises. Your dog, however, if you only touch your dog on, your, on his feet when he's brought to the vet, when you clip the nails, guess what your dog is going to hate to do? Mm -hmm. And what happens when a child comes and takes your dog's paw? <sighs> Do children will pull tails. Even though I have books that says tails are not for pulling, dog, children are going to do that to a dog. That's the only time they experience someone touching their tail, or if they're not familiar with somebody touching, pulling on their tail, they're going to be unhappy about it. So gently, I don't mean... <clears throat> Gently pull their tail, give them a treat. So when you're practicing that, say you're doing the paw and the dog's doing one of these numbers, if you're giving them a kibble, would you be rewarding them from pulling if away? If they're pulling away, yes. Okay, but so if, you, if they're pulling away, then stop, back up. Okay. Now just touch the paw, okay, give so kibble. Start In other words, it, now let's say your dog has never been hugged. You've now gotten a dog from the shelter and you go to hug them, because we do that way too much for the dog. They're like, whoop, back up. Now, just lean over and put your hand up on top of their head. Oh, we did that fine, kibble. Now, maybe a little bit more kibble. The slower you go to get them used to it, the better. So if they're doing this, back up and try it smaller. Then I'll just pat, touch the paw, kibble, touch the paw. Don't allow your dog to jump up. <clears throat> Put your dog in a sit. If you have a hard and fast sit, you are not, they're not going to be jumping up. Practice sit everywhere, all over the place, in every room of your house. Uh, and practice eye attention. If they're looking at you, they're not gonna, probably not going to be jumping up or barking at another dog. But that, again, is a good obedience class. <laughs> Introduce your dog to children's toys without the children around. Yes. So bring out the bicycle, 
Roll the wheels, treat, treat, treat. Walk them around the bicycle, treat, treat, treat. Bring out the skateboard. Step on it, touch on it. In my puppy class, I have a skateboard that floats around. And periodically, I will get children that love to ride the skateboard, and I give them a bag of treats, and all they do is splew. It like it's like it becomes the Macy's parade. They're the riding float with treats flying off the float. Anything with wheels, okay? And then, periodically, act like a child. How do you do that? Put your dog on the leash. And Sophia Yen actually has some very good um, videos of this. Put your dog on the leash, put him in a sit, lovely. And then go, ah, da, 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 Come back in the sit, treat. As I call it, and you know, humans have a very difficult time doing this. <laughs> so go back and remember your playground voice and use it. Crate train your dog. A dog that has a place that that, that's their own, that's their spa, that's their retreat, is a calmer dog. And a crate is no place for a child. I've often seen these pictures in various places, and actually I foster dogs. I had one that sent me a picture, and the child was playing cars in the crate with the dog, and the dog had that. <laughs> I promptly called them up and said, no, 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 don't do this. So that crate is a, is a kid-free zone. You should have a kid's-free zone and a dog-free zone. So for example, the baby's um, area, play area, uh, playpen, uh, should be a dog-free zone. Don't put the dog in there. Okay. Or where you're changing diapers, don't have the dog in there. And there should be a kid-free zone, and that's your dog. Keep it positive. Keep it positive for the child and the dog. Teach your dog tricks. Paw, roll over, touch. Touch is a very easy thing to teach a dog. You just put your hand out, you say touch. The minute their nose hits you, the, your hand, you give them a treat. You can do all kinds of interesting things from that. You can even move them away from a child if you need to. Touch, 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 touch. Now the child's over here and the dog's over here. <clears throat> Have something that the child can teach the dog too as well. Let's say the, you have a baby <clears throat> and you want to teach get it. Give the child a whole bunch of Cheerios so they can eat it and say, okay, we have this great game, it's called Get It. They throw the Cheerio over there, get it! Now, the dog thinks the kid is really wonderful and marvelous because every time he's there, he gets Cheerios, which he doesn't get any other time. And give the child rules. What are rule, the rules for the child? Don't approach a sleeping dog. Don't approach a dog that has a rawhide. <laughs> uh, don't get in a crate. Don't go where a dog is, where a, an adult is not around. I'm sorry. No, I'm forgetting one here. So when you talk about that, do you even mean with the family dog when they're beyond, I don't know, toddler stage? Yes. Like, what are your definitions of even with a dog? Um, actually, dog bites occur predominantly, actually, with children. And amazingly, a lot of the bites that occur is with a dog they know because the child overstepped the boundaries. Or the other thing that I've seen happen is that the family basically punished the calming signals out of the dog. Mm -hmm. the, the dog pulled away. The, the, the adult corrected that in the dog, corrected a growl. So now, and it wa here's why a growl is so important. If you have a ticking time bomb, you want to hear the tick. So if you take away the growl, what's the next thing the dog's going to do? Just bite. Just bite. So the case, it, it, so the case is, is that if you have a dog that you know and is pretty calm around a dog, you should still be in the same room if you have a baby. There's no way. Sure. No way. Now, if you have about an eight-year-old child, right. you know, it might be a slightly different story. There might be a slightly less. But again, make sure your dog's pretty palm proof and keep an eye out. Make sure, because there's going to be warning signs. 
If you've trained your child right, there's going to be warning signs. So pet gently, never approach a strong trained dog, it's off limits. Uh, leave the dog alone if it's sleeping, and it should, they should never ever be left alone with the dog, including their, their family dog. Keep an eye out. And no crates. This is a cute picture, but not a good idea. And look what the dog's doing. He has completely stopped breathing. He is looking at the person that's taking the picture and going, please help. Other dogs or stray dogs. A uh, good way to, 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 what to teach children is be like a tree. So if you have a dog in the area that you don't know who it is, it's off leash, it's stray, and they're alone, there's no adult around, tell them to become like a tree. And become like a tree is you stop, you fold your branches, you look down at the ground. Why? Any kind of eye attention on a dog that is kind of unpredictable is a show of challenge. Okay? What you will see is when dogs meet each other, they'll turn away. So basically what you want to do is have your child do the exact same thing. I'm turning away. Okay. If, for some reason, um, you have a dog that's barking or running after the child, and for whatever reason the child ends up on the ground, tell them to roll up in a fetile position. Roll up with their hands and arms tightly bound. Uh, that will not leave any appendages out there. The appendage that you're most worried about is this and their face. Okay? Don't run. You are now playing the dogs first favorite game, which is, I'm it, you try to get me, okay? Immediate things that you can do to uh, help, make sure you have a spayed and neutered dog. There, that, will, that will decrease the amount of uh, aggression tendencies. You also won't have occurrences where their, their hormones are flipping out, and with male dogs that happens often. They can smell a female dog at least five miles away, and they will go across an interstate highway to get to it. So they'll go through a child <laughs> to get to it. Never leave infants and young children alone with dogs. Never leave infants alone with the dog. Um, don't play aggressive games with dogs. This makes men sadder, so sad, when they come to class and their dog is mouthing. Bad case of mouthing. I said, are you wrestling with your dog? Yes. You have to stop. <laughs> but I like doing it and he enjoys it. Stop. <laughs> a dog skin is different than a human skin. And if they think it's fine and cool to wrestle with you, they are, you are not teaching them that we don't, we don't bite human skin. Then when it comes to be a child who's now suddenly running around them and who's even got more tender skin, you're not gonna get it. And men are notorious about this. And they're so sad when I have to tell them to stop. It's like I've taken away their favorite toy. Properly socialize your dog and train your dog for and any entering your household. It's amazing to me that people pay a thousand dollars for a dog and then don't go to a twenty-five dollar one day lesson at PetSmart or wherever. And we would say, train your dog with rewards-based training only. A prong collar is not going to make your dog calm about hanging out next to people if he's getting jerked like this. Some treats. <laughs> so then can you get to the point where you can use the pinched hand, or is that not something it's you can do? It's not a good idea to do. Can't. You really should always treat like you're cupping your hand around. So even if you're doing a training mm -hmm. session, you should always have to mm -hmm. open your hand. Yes. Because you con you're constantly working to teach the dog no teeth on skin. Right. If they're immediately getting rewarded right. for it. So, in my opinion, dogs really are saints. They put up with a lot. We asked a lot of them. But they need help. 
I think it's a wonderful idea when parents say, I want to get a dog because I want to teach my child responsibility. You know, you can teach a child responsibility. However, what I have found is people have too high expectation of the child and too high expectation of the dog. So just adjust your, adjust your expectation and be an educated dog, a dog owner.